Good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. In today's Stock Market Live, we're going to break down the entire stock market today. We're going to talk about two books. We're also going to talk about the opportunities of when there are much bigger stock market profits on the table and when you should just be trading back and forth for cash flow, if you should be trading at all. And we're actually going to answer a question today. Today is our weekly coaching call for Orderflow Pro. I'm going to show you a question that we're going to answer tonight on our coaching call about when are bigger stock market profits available and how to know when to go after them. We're going to break that down a little bit today with the stock market power pyramid. Uh, I also am going to talk about two different books that are absolutely should be in your shelf. There's a lot of talk right now about value investing, especially when the market pulls back a little bit. What exactly does value investing mean? I'm going to throw something out there and say that probably too many people, and I know this is sacrilege, put a little bit too much emphasis on the actual stock price and whether or not a low P.E. ratio is the right time to buy a value stock. Just because something's a low P.E. ratio does not make it a value play. We all know margin is safety, so we're going to dive a little bit into that. We're also going to work our way over into a very popular quote by Jesse Livermore. If you don't know who Jesse Livermore is, we're going to talk about that. So what we're going to cover today from top to bottom <laughs> is we're going to determine has the bull market started again after that really nice three-day rally, which is following up as of right now? Or are we simply looking at a bear flag in a bearish tape where we just rallied a little bit looking for another move down? We got the CPI number this week. We got the PPI number this week. We have the FOMC next week. What a glorious time to be a trader. Stick around. We will be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much for being here with me today, everybody. We're going to jump right into it. I want to jump into a question that we have from one of our members because it's going to translate all the way into the types of trades that I am looking to trade this week. I'm going to show you the email that I sent out this morning to all of our members and exactly what we're talking about in that email. Can't stress this enough. I'm going to actually start out with the question, and then we're going to work our way over into Jesse Livermore's quote, and then we're going to tie that back into sector rotation. I guess we'll start out with the big question. Has the stock market bottomed out with that really good three-day rally last week? Wednesday of last week, probably the best day for stock trading. Thursday and Friday, the market did rally a little bit, but not really with the same kind of volume. It was a little bit tougher. It was that one day that kind of caught everybody by surprise. It was amazing. But we're still following through today, which is pretty interesting. But <laughs> if you look at the big picture of the market right now, we are setting up as a bear flag. But <laughs> what we are right now is neutral at best. So I'm actually going to start out with a question that is from our coaching call tonight. We're going to bring this all the way back in. OK, uh, last week I had a hard time with big picture trades, kept giving back profits back and broke even on some of them. My timing was off too. scalping was good. I had to review the order flow modules and stuff over the weekend. What is the right market condition for big picture trades like 5x or 10x rewards? So let's first set up the beginning part of this trade because it really plays into this entire week of trading, especially with CPI coming out, especially with the FOMC next week. And I can't get this across. Now we're going to jump into another image, right? We're going to go right over here and we're going to talk about Jesse Livermore and probably the one that I want to talk about right here. Do not trade every day of the year. I can't express this strongly enough. I, I, look, I'm an active day trader. I've been day trading stocks since 2000. Working my way a little bit more towards longer term trades as I get a little bit older and get a little bit more gray hair. But this applies to both styles of trading. There isn't, and I want to say this, there isn't a time where you should always be super active. You have to recognize when the conditions are amazing and recognize when the conditions are OK and then trade OK with a little bit lower risk profile. If the stock market is not perfect, you have to step away and say right now we're kind of in capital preservation mode and any profits that we get are probably going to be up towards the top of that power pyramid, which is where we're going to be very, very stock specific. So how does that take us into this week? Well, now we're going to work our way over into uh, email. So we're going to head on over here and we're going to take a look at the email that we sent out today. OK, so this went out to our order flow pro team. Uh, CPI data this week, FOMC next week, light on companies reporting. So we're setting the tone for the bias and the follow through. After last week's three day surge, we shift back to the economy, inflation and interest rates. So let's be clear about this. 
There's not a lot of earnings on the stock market calendar this week. I think Oracle is probably the biggest one that I noticed on the calendar. So now all we're going to hear now between now and next Wednesday, next Wednesday is interest rates. What is Jerome Powell going to talk about? What is he hinting at? Well, leading up to this point, they've made it very clear they're going to be aggressive. Inflation is still out of control other than oil prices, which are actually down a little bit this morning. So that's not going away anytime soon. So anybody who thinks that they're going to fix inflation in a heartbeat, you're wrong. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So we're going to now shift over towards what type of opportunities are going to be available this week, whether it's a active three-day trade like we had last week, which was just amazing, or are we looking at something where we could lean into a little bit longer? So the first thing I want to talk about, I, want, I promise to bring a couple of books in. So we just gave you that quote by Jesse Livermore. We'll pull that actually back up on the screen. Let me grab that for you again. So the big one that we were looking at is actually this one. Only enter a trade, uh, actually right here. Do not trade every day. Now you could actually pull that up. And I want to say this as friends, right? If you are an active participant in the market, and I don't care if you place one trade a month, this is an absolute must book. It's by Edwin LeFay. It is one of the, oh gosh, original books of like, look how much I, I highlighted this book. Like it's all over the place. These Some of these are, I don't know if you can see, it's actually from 2003. This is a must. And I'm going to tell you why this book is a must. Jesse Livermore, if you don't know, he ended his life tragically, but he is well known as one of the best tape readers in the history of Wall Street. What does that have to do with right now? This week is going to be a very big tape reading week. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that by hopping over into the actual charts of uh, what's going on this week. So we want to hop over here and we want to so you can see the futures are actually up a little bit. If we kind of zoom out a little bit further and we take a look at where price action is right now, the majority of price action going all the way back into May is now kind of stuck between this level right now. Now we've stopped going down. This is where the bear market should have took over. Michael Burry, all that conversation, we're going down another 53% and all that got shoved right back in the face, right? A couple of weeks with Jerome Powell not having good outlook, We've, if you go back to last Wednesday's uh, video, we actually talked about the market actually bottoming out here based on the average true move. All of that setup, right? All of that's exciting. What's the most important part of that right now? Let's go back to the question that we just brought up before because it's critical, right? So if we go over here and take a look at this question, what is the right market condition for big picture trades that bring on five to 10 times reward? And I'm going to keep referring back to this. And if we look at the big picture of the market right now, can anybody right now over the last, I don't know, what is this, five months, May, June, July, August, now we're into September, May, June, July, August, yeah. So we're kind of stuck. We're kind of stuck right now. So what does that mean from a big picture perspective? Well, if we keep talking about the stock market power pyramid, it's very critical to understand what that looks like, right? So if we're talking about right now in the big picture, which is a five-month window, which I know that seems like an eternity for some active traders right now, Right now, this is kind of sideways to neutral. Neutral at best. So if I bring in the game plan analysis heading into this week, I just want to finish up on this. Should be a fun week to read the trick. Can the bulls hold the bid or did we simply see a bear flag setting up? So right now in this picture right now, we actually have push down and a pause, a push down and a pause. But right now, the last three weeks have been bearish. We actually had a bearish U-turn which we saw right here, perfectly come in at the 50 period moving average on the weekly chart. Bearish U-turn is a reversal pattern, right? We actually saw one here, right? Well offered, well offered, followed by a bullish engulfing candlestick on a short week. Now, if you don't know what a bullish engulfing candlestick is, it means it took out the low and took out the high of the previous candle and closed strong, in this case, very much near the high of the day. But look at the bigger picture here. Look at how many weeks were either bearish, barely bullish, or neutral. So if we go back to that quote by Jesse Livermore, and I want to keep bringing it up because it's that important, do not trade every day of the year. So that quote can also be used in the context of how often and what kind of aggression we should have. And I guess really conviction is probably a little bit better word for that. So again, I want to go back over to the email because I want to give you my mindset for heading into this entire week. Now, this is really important because when you have your mind set, it can be an opinion that's hard to change. We don't want to have opinions. We want to have a bias. We want to map out this based on what's happening. This is what I expect to see. 
And what's exciting about that is we kind of take ourselves away from predicting or forecasting, but more importantly, believing that we need to be right. Great traders, traders that last a long time are ones that form a bias and then have a plan if that bias unfolds. So I'm telling you right now, the bias for the week, while last week was impressive, we have massive headstorms this week. We have PPI, CPI, and FOMC next week. Right now, we are bearish to neutral at best. The bias is neutral at best, critical to have a process so you can get chopped up. Now, this is a big part of this right now. If price action doesn't make sense to you, it's okay to be in cash. A lot of people do not understand that, especially us that are like really active, love to be trading, love to be in the market. We want to be in there all day. It's fine sometimes if the market does not meet the model of the way you read the tape or the way that you set up your trades. It's better to do nothing if what you're looking at doesn't make sense. We had a long conversation last week about whether or not the bull market has started or whether or not it's simply a bear flag. I can't even say bear trap. It's just a clean bear flag in the big picture. So what does that mean? The very fact that we are having a discussion about it not being obvious should instantly tell you if you normally risk this much, it's time to drop that risk down other than stock specific ideas. And actually somebody posted in here, uh, Eric, healthcare. Healthcare did line up a little bit last week. I'm going to actually, you know what, let's actually take a quick look at that. We'll look at XLV healthcare. So we did actually see a little bit of a pop last week in healthcare, and we'll break that down in just a second. So the big thing I want to get across to you, now again, obviously everything here is for educational purposes. It's up to you to make that final decision, but I get really jazzed up at helping you make better decisions. And sometimes a better decision is not trading as aggressively until the picture clears up a little bit. And again, I want to give you that mindset, this visualization that I give everybody in our community. There's no better visualization than driving. Sometimes there's, you know, the road's wide open and you're comfortable doing 75. That would translate into the trend. The order flow is super obvious and you should have more share size and you should hold longer. But then there's other times you're on the road at stop and go traffic and you, you're breaking your gas, you're breaking your gas, you're breaking your gas. You might still get where you're going, but you shouldn't be stepping on the gas with aggression. That's the kind of tape that we're in right now where we had three weeks of aggressive selling followed by three days of buying. Just put that into the equation. Three weeks of selling, three days of buying, CPI report this week, FOMC next week. So what kind of traffic do you think you're heading into right now? A little bit more fine-tuning on how to get to where you want. Maybe you pull out the GPS and you go a couple of different routes. That's where now we got to break down going into the week, neutral bias, stock specific. So now we start to work our way up the power pyramid. So if we take a look at this again, this is neutral now we're going to work our way up here into which sectors are going to give us some ideas based on rotation. So if we look at rotation heading into this week, last week, the last five days, just absolutely amazing. Now, what floated to the top? What's been the strongest over the last five days? This goes back all the way to the previous Friday. We've talked about financials and we've talked about the banks. Wells Fargo is probably at the top of the list of the banks right now right near a breakout level. So Wells Fargo right now over 47. We get questions all the time. Just give me the price. Tell me where I'm going to get in. Wells Fargo over 47 is a level. If you remember last week, if we're talking about consumer cyclical, right? So let's go back to that list right there and take a look at consumer cyclical, which is number two on the list. We're going to be talking about cruise lines. And we actually mapped this out. Hopefully you participated in this one last week. 45 was the big level. So what I want to get across here is the stock market can be as easy as you want it to be if you have a process. So the way that we look at things is we set up that stock. And you want, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this. We set up the stock market power pyramid to first say, is the market obvious? Then we work our way up. So since the market's not obvious right now, other than three days of buying, we're now working our way up to sectors, groups, and stock specific. So as we work our way through here, then we're going to look at what we call stacked order flow. The stacked order flow right now, this list expanded dramatically as well. But what we want to do now, now remember what we're doing, this is our treasure hunt part of trading. And we're trying to make a decision. Has the bull market started? Has the stock market reversed and we can get in there? For me, the answer is absolutely no. I'm looking for more stock specific and industry group specific ideas. I want the Fed out of the way 
before I step on the gas and say, okay, now I'm going to hammer this. I'm going to hold longer. And now I'm going to be trading for cash flow. We've got two good questions this week that we're talking about this evening on our coaching call, which is all about the current market conditions. If you are getting your head beat in right now, where you're trading long, you're trading short, and nothing you do is, is correct, it simply means that you need to dial in your strategy a little bit to say, is it obvious now? Are buyers or sellers doing something obvious? If the answer comes back yes, that means that the time frame you're watching, the answer is yes. But if you're still getting your head beat in, that means it's the wrong time frame for you. That's so important. I can't express that. So now let's break down the sectors a little bit more. All right. So we know coming into the week, pivotal week, the stock market, possibly the most pivotal week of the year. So I want to I want to say this because I want to give full transparency of what I mentioned yesterday. We have every Sunday at 11 a.m. We have a swing trade review session and a game plan session for the coming week. I believe that inflation is going to be very tough uh, and something that they're going to have to deal with the rest of the year. I believe that we're going to have a little bit of a shorter term move to the upside this week, which should make um, reading the tape and cash flow type trades more prevalent this week. So that means that I'm not going to be looking to build positions on the long side this week. I'm going to let my existing positions follow through, wait for the FOMC next week. That doesn't mean I'm not going to trade. It just means I'm not going to trade with the same aggression from a share size perspective because the market's neutral. And I am not going to be adding to positions because of all the big numbers coming out this week, including the uh, CPI this week and the FOMC next week. So if we work our way through the rotation and we see the amount, again, you can see sorted by gain over the previous uh, trading days. Now we want to break this down and we want to take a look and see where are pockets of opportunity. So as we just pointed out before, healthcare, there's a couple in here. Saba is actually number one on the list. If you haven't traded Saba recently, um, it's actually near a breakout level. And you can see it's got some room to go. Now, I actually did get a couple of emails about Saba because we talked about this. Again, healthcare, Saba, the stock is volatile. You really, really need to understand the stock. If I'm giving you insight as a friend, especially if you're on the day trading side of things, but if we talk about the swing trading side of things, Saba is a news uh mongrel <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying there's no black and white and i mean there's no in between it's either really on one end of the extreme or really on the other end of the extreme so for everybody who reached out to me about saba this week and healthcare it's absolutely lining up it's absolutely breaking out you got to really know the stock we actually talked about a few of these stocks last week as far as setting up ideas this is not a stock for the faint of heart <laughs> i will tell you that right now it meets the criteria but it's not for the faint of heart if we continue to work our way through, we should notice now consumer cyclical. We just talked about Royal Caribbean. We talked about Tesla. We talked about Airbnb. We talked about Hilton. Money flows at the same time, and that makes it easier to trade those ideas. So right now we're looking our way up the power pyramid. We're going beyond the sector and now into industry groups. If you're struggling to find good ideas, the number one thing I could suggest to you right now is first make a decision. Is the market obvious? and then find sectors that are obvious with the market. So you'll have most of the smart money on your side before you even look for an entry. A lot of people that struggle in the stock market and can't determine whether it's bullish or bearish, it's simply because you just need a structure. I can't express that strongly enough. So if we work our way through this right now, even though energy stocks are a big part of this list, energy is actually pulling back again. So let's actually go back into look at crude oil and see where we are. You can see that it's well below and at resistance right now. 95 is the big level it needs to get above, but you can see that we're actually bearish right now. So despite the fact that energy stocks are in this list, I'm not going to be looking to trade them right now. We do have a couple of financial stocks. We actually just mentioned uh, Wells Fargo, and I'm looking at Wells Fargo above that level. Some of the other stocks, and probably one of my favorite stocks, if you remember last week, we talked about the solar stocks. Now, they're getting a lot of help from Washington. Anything that's clean energy and that kind of stuff is getting a lot of attention right now. And they were a really good short-term trade, but they went a little bit too far too fast to justify the risk. However, one of my top ideas heading into today is Run. Run has now actually paused right at a big breakout level and right here. And after three days to the upside, you can see it's a little bit down a little bit this morning, but I'm looking for it to trade above 39. Now, 
I want to be clear about what I just said, because sometimes people hear just a little part of what I said. I like run above 39. That's where I'm looking to start an initial position if it breaks out. If run never gets above 39 and trades down today and needs to pause a little bit more, then I'm not getting involved. So I want to be clear about that. If this happens, then I plan to do this. So I'm looking for run above 39. Now, I want to work our way out a little bit bigger picture, and we're looking at the markets, right? We're talking about which which stocks. And I'm actually going to go to one that is a very big uh, – the word I'm looking for, polarizing stock, PLTR, PLTR, Palantir, right? A lot of people talk about this stock. A lot of people love this stock. A lot of people love uh, the CEO of Palantir. He's kind of a little kooky and, uh, you know, like it's exciting, right? The company's not making money yet in order to justify this. So I want to bring another book into the, um, into the conversation. Probably, I mean, obviously everybody's heard of Warren Buffett. And there's many, many different ways, discounted cash flow analysis, all of those things you could possibly be looking at. We just talked about price earnings ratio and just low price earnings ratios are not necessarily a value stock. So what is a value stock? So I want to set the tone now for the for now and throughout the remainder of 2022. I believe that inflation at the rate that it's at right now, and again, this is my trading experience. I think that the market is going to, between now and the end of the year, I think it's going to have to take its lumps a little bit in order to reestablish where we were last year in 2021, even though 2021 was mostly from quantitative easing. But here's the thing. If you want to elevate yourself, right now is the time to think about if the market, if the stock market does crash, if the Fed raises interest rates so aggressively that it causes the money supply to change and stocks start to go down. Let's think like business people and think what stocks are going to be valuable that I'd love to own those businesses. So we have to now set up at the end of the year, getting ready for it. Now, the biggest thing in this book, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen this book, Robert Hagstrom, right? The Warren Buffett way, probably the biggest thing in this book. Now, let's let's just say what it is long-term investing and going over all the financial reports and everything like that, it's an absolute part, right? You need to understand income statements, balance sheets, cash flow, and all that kind of stuff. But I want to be clear about this. What is the easiest thing to do? And I'm going to, I'm going to put this in here about Palantir, okay? Do you understand what Palantir does? <laughs> so in other words, if the owner of Palantir and it's government contracts and all that kind of stuff, but it's secretive, right? If And I'm just using Palantir as an example. I have nothing against Palantir. I'm just using this as an example so that we can think about if the stock market and inflation clash and the market should pull back in the big picture for the remainder of 2022, we are going to have some bargains. We're going to have some stocks that are actual value stocks, not just because their PE ratios are, are low, all right? So what does that mean? Whether it's this book or whether it's the book from Peter Lynch that came out, and I believe in the 80s, one up on Wall Street, what business would you like to be an owner of? That's the question you have right now. If your neighbor came down the block and said, I want you to invest in my deli, I want you to invest in my Italian restaurant, you'd want to know what they do and you want to know, are they good managers? Do they have a track record of actually earning money? I'm going to say this clearly right now. If you think about one of the biggest parts of this book, which is, would you like to own the business? Not would you like to own the stock for three days, for three months? Would you like to own the business? Would, if somebody said to you, put all your money in a 401k in this thing, you would need to know, do they actually run a profitable business? This book is going to be a big thing that we're going to keep going over between now and the end of the year, because I don't think that stocks are at that margin of safety right now at all. I think if we get to the point where we pull back a little bit more aggressively, and I think we are because of inflation, then we're going to have a lot more conversations about which stocks meet the margin of safety uh, number, for lack of a better way of putting it. If you don't know what margin of safety is, it essentially means if this is the right intrinsic value of the stock, I still want to get it lower than that because that's really where the risk in a trade is for a value investor, where you're actually buying it cheaper then maybe even it's book value or something along those lines, right? So if you don't have this book, it's a tremendous, tremendous book. But more importantly, this is getting prepared for something that is, in my opinion, likely to happen later in the year. So if you start preparing now 
to understand if the stock market crashes. And I'm I want to be clear about this. I don't want that to happen. I'm just kind of reading the tape and reading the tea leaves. I would rather be prepared for an opportunity that never comes than not prepared if it does. And I want to say this in a big way. How many of you right now, whether watching this video live or watching the replay, how many of you would like to have thought about this three to six months before the crash of 2008, before the pandemic of 2020? How many people would like to go back and say, yeah, I spent two months building a list that just in case the market pulled back, these stocks are no brainers and could be life changing. That's what I'm trying to walk you through right now, because this is actually um, the mindset of people who win. And I just want to say that straight up. You're here at 730 in the morning. You someone's watching this video later. That makes you a winner. But now we got to be prepared. We got to take the action that winners take, which means that we have to mentally be prepared. If the market continues to rally to the upside, what does that mean? Which means we get a little bit more clear and the tape starts to look a little more bullish. If the tape, inflation, CPI, and the FOMC all clash and we have what they're calling the super bubble, you now need to be preserving capital, trading for cash flow, and building a list of stocks. You say, my gosh, I can't believe that stock is on sale at this price right now. I would love to own this business. Those are the kind of things. Those are the kind of mental preparation and, again, notebooks and, and all those kind of things where you want to be ready. I don't want the stock market to crash. But if it does, you could bet your bottom dollar, I'll be ready with a big list of stocks ready. And hopefully we're going to have a lot of these types of conversations out here. So getting all the way back into this current week, do not have a lot of big earnings this week. Like I said, Oracle, I think is the biggest one that I know. We do have the CPI number coming out. So that means that I am mostly going to be tape reading this week if and until the SPY can get out of this window. Now, if we're looking at a little bit more stock specific stuff, if you want, please take a snapshot of this and let me get myself off the picture here. Take a snapshot of this so you can actually see all the stocks that meet what we call stacked order flow. So stacked order flow means that it's bullish in one, two, three, four timeframes from last week. So this is how professional traders set up their week. This is not predicting. We are now building an argument for if this happens, I know exactly what I plan to do. If you want to elevate what you do, and more importantly, and I want to say this, I know I'm on video right now, and it's not something that you would normally say on video, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you want to expect to make money reliably, consistently, predictably, it requires that you have a strategy. So right now, whatever your strategy is doing right now, you have to ask yourself, am I getting the results that I want or is the market really tough? I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of you might be saying, what's going on? The market's beating me up. I can't catch it. I can't catch a break right now, right? The market's been a little challenging the last month or so. We've been talking a lot in our community about the opportunity to make money and, and we call them pockets of opportunity where if we're on the day trading side of things, sometimes it's good for two hours, which you've had a lot of that recently. But then there's also plenty of times where I am literally on the microphone and I'll pull the microphone in here and I'm like, okay, everybody, there's nothing to do right now. Let's go make a second cup of coffee. That's real trading. And that's the stuff that you need to recognize. Right now, we are kind of in a bearish to neutral market in the big picture, which means that we really need to dive a little bit deeper into the rotation and where those stocks are trading. Now, the one thing I do want to point out, we mentioned this last week, I think we've been mentioning it for a couple of weeks now, is basic material stocks. Basic material stocks have been floating to the top of that list, and I've been watching them quite a bit. We've been uh, actually, you know, let me go into the list of stocks. I want to make sure that you have those um, as well. So if we hop on over and take a look at basic material stocks and we filter them down, and what we're looking for is we're looking to see which ones are above the 50 period moving average, which ones actually have some room to go. Now, Alcoa, again, you can see we're kind of still stuck in this box. I loved Alcoa over here, did not follow through. We actually talked about CF, which actually pulled back and we were looking for it in the 110 to 112 area, didn't get it until over here. So let's walk through and see which ones are setting up well for this week. BHP, no. FCX also needs to get through this level. Rio, no. NTR, 
uh, maybe we've got pretty good bullish price action here. Steel stocks, STLD and X, both of those. And look at the profit potential here. Mosaic actually has been strong, but again, three days. We need to get out of this window. So out of everything I'm looking at right now, I'm probably going to be leaning towards steel stocks. And again, NUE, same thing right there. And you got some room to go. AEM, very similar, but that's a little bit more bearish. So I'm probably looking at NUE. So financials, basic materials, consumer cyclicals. Those are the list of stocks that I'm going to be starting out looking at this week. We're looking for the market, the bullish engulfing candlestick on last week's market. So let's actually go back to that so we can give everybody full context of what we're looking at there. And we're going to take oh, SPY and take a look at the market. What are we looking to see happen in the market? So because of this bullish engulfing candlestick, we now want to see this happen. We want to see higher highs and higher lows. So right now the SPY, let's just say it's right around 409, just for this conversation right now, right there. So whatever, let's mark this down. We're going to talk about this as the week unfolds. To set up your trades with conviction, we want the market on our side. We, we're not guessing. We're just saying if this happens, that means something. So right now, wherever the SPY ETF opens up today, Monday, that's going to be our line in the sand. That's how we're going to read the tape for this week. So we want two things to happen. We want price action to stay above Monday's opening price for the week. And best case scenario, the bullish engulfing candlestick from last week, which is this candle right here, we want to see it go well bid, which means higher highs and higher lows. If that happens and those list of stocks that we just talked about that have bullish order flow heading into this week, which was basic materials, consumer cyclicals and financials work their way up the list, then those groups of stocks, we can trade a little bit more aggressively. If the stock market opens today and does not follow through on last week's buying pressure and trades below the opening price, then we go to the list of stocks that have bearish order flow. And that would be this list of stocks. And you can see that's actually now dominated by tech stocks, right? So you've got NVIDIA, Marvel, Qualcomm, WDC, right? So you got a bunch of tech stocks in there as well. So that's the game plan for the week. If this happens, we know what we're doing. If it doesn't happen, we know what we're doing. And more specifically, we know which stocks we're going to be trading. This is how you wake up every day and every week and every month expecting to make money. Now, I want to be clear about this. I don't make money every day. I don't have to make money every day. I have to make more when trades follow through and keep my risk smaller. And that's a big part of trading that a lot of people don't understand. They believe it got to be right every trade. You don't. <laughs> you have to be right and understand the market conditions. So right now, the market conditions are calling for a little bit more cash flow type trades. So what does that mean? It means when I get moves in my favor, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with locking in those profits unless the market does exactly what we wanted. So let's bring this all the way back to how trading for this week. Are we going to have stop and go traffic waiting for the CPI and the FOMC next week? Or are we going to get on the road and it's going to be, yeah, more green candles, baby. Let's hop on there and just hang on to those trades. What's exciting about what I just told you in, in probably 15 seconds is you now know exactly what to look for. That's the key to trading. When you know what you're looking for, you're not lost anymore. Here's where you separate yourself from everybody who says trading doesn't work. The stock market is tough. It's if you know what you're looking for and you see it, you mix it up. You get in there. You're comfortable taking risk. If you know what you're looking for and you don't see it, uh, that's the part of trading where you separate yourself and you do something special. Because if you don't see what you want to see and you don't trade, that's smart trading. The traders that struggle know what they want to see, don't see it, and trade anyway, and they're just throwing money out the window. So I just gave you the whole breakdown of how I'm looking at the market this week. So I'm very excited to be reading the tape this week. It's going to be a little bit more short-term trading unless the market can maintain that well -bit, uh, bullish engulfing candlestick from last week. So very excited for this week. I can't wait to read the tape. We're going to get some good volatility. I think pretty well we're going to know after the FOMC announcement next week what the remainder of 2022 is going to look like, all the Fed conversation, Jerome Powell conversation. So what does that mean? Let's get ready. This is going to be an amazing week of trading. Thank you so much for joining me here today, everybody. I will speak to you on Wednesday.